In this video, you will learn how to create movement with still photographs. This style is actually not new, it's very old. It's called chronophotography. This is a style of photography that captures movements using several frames or multiple prints or multiple negatives stacked on top of each other. Or in today's world, this is much easier to do than back in the Victorian times. We can take digital photos using a tripod or any kind of digital photos showing movement and layer them on top of each other in Photoshop. We will show a sense of movement by layering different photos on top of each other and using our tools in Photoshop to reveal the layers underneath it. So let's get started. I've already taken my pictures for this project, so we're ready to go ahead and start a new document in Photoshop. I do plan on printing my photo when I'm done, so I want to make sure that my document is of high quality or high resolution. After you've selected all of your document prefer preferences, click OK. Now that I have a blank document, I'm going to browse for my photographs. I've saved all my photographs from the photo shoot in the same folder. They are in order of sequence that I took them. I have edited them to change the color a little bit. And now I need to take some time and kind of go through and pick the ones I want. I'll be importing or inserting one picture at a time into Photoshop. As I place it, there's a transformation box around it where I can choose to resize it at this time. And when I get it the size I want, I click the check mark in the options bar or select another tool. This part is kind of tedious because the project that I made had at least 10 layers or more. You can decide how many different layers you show in your, pick, in your project. But what I learned is the best thing to do when doing taking photos for a project like this is to use a tripod. I did not use a tripod, which made my editing much more difficult. I just stood still and handheld my camera as I took the photos. So as I place them in Photoshop one at a time, it's taking me a little extra time and care to resize them and line them up. If you use a tripod when you do your photo shoot, your camera won't move around so much and you won't have to take as much time in lining up your photos. So what I've done is I went to File, Place, Embedded, and I've changed my photo from 100% opacity to a lesser number so I could see through my picture to help me line it up on top of the other one. I'm looking for important intersecting points within my picture that I want to line up, like the top of the shoulders and the top of the head of the mannequin. And what I actually did in my photo shoot was move the arms and the legs. So this is going to be quite tedious as I work through and place each individual picture. I'm going to go ahead and fast forward this process so you don't have to watch it all, but I had to go file place embedded each image and bring in each layer individually. It is important to save your projects as you work because Photoshop does not auto save for you. So whenever you do something major or put a lot of time in, it's important you save your project often. I decided that using a few guides would be helpful in lining up my project in important intersections like the shoulders, the feet, and the top of the head. So to use guides in Photoshop, you must first turn on the rulers by clicking on the View menu, then select Rulers. After your rulers are up, you can use the Move tool to click on the ruler and drag down a guide wherever you want to place it. If you don't like where you've placed it, you can move it using the Move tool. You can also clear these at any time during your project. These guides in Photoshop will not print, they're purely to help you with design. So now that I have a few layers uh, working here, I have quite a few more to place. So I'm going to continue to file, place, embedded the photos that I took, resize them, change the opacity 
so I can see through them as I combine together my chrono photography image. I did set the video to super high speed. If you need to slow it down to see the individual steps, feel free to rewatch it. Now that I have all my layers placed and my chrono photography image organized, it looks like my mannequin has moved its arms from one space to a different location. But all of my layers are set to different levels of opacity, and I've decided that I would like them to be at 100% strength for the look of my final image. You're more than welcome to use opacity as a tool to help you make your chrono photography image, and all you have to do is change your layer from 100% opacity to whatever amount you prefer. I want to use mine at 100% opacity, which means I need to go through and add a layer mask on each individual object and hide parts of the layer that I don't want to be seen. I hid all layers by clicking on the eye icon in the layers palette and started with the very first layer. I used the menu, selected select subject. Photoshop now has a new object selection tool or subject select tool that would work perfect for this. I selected the subject, but I actually want to hide the background. So I actually have to inverse my selection. So I selected the subject by going to select subject. Photoshop did a pretty good job of selecting the mannequin. Then I'm going to go to layer, layer mask, and I want to reveal the selection. I want the mannequin to show up and the background to be hidden. So I repeated this process of hiding the background and having the mannequin show up using layer masks on each layer. It was very tedious. It depends what the colors are in your photograph on what selection process would work best. But the key here is using layer masks to hide the parts of the picture you want to be hidden and to reveal the parts that you want to show up. As you can see, my project is evolving here. As I work through each layer, the process is the same. Select subject, layer, layer mask, reveal all, and my subject of my mannequin will show up and it will hide the background where we can see through to the layers underneath it. After you've applied your layer mask to all layers, I would click through and double check that all the parts or different versions of your picture show up. I did leave a white background layer to help me see what I missed and what's there. There's lots of different directions you can go with chrono photography, but the goal with this project is to learn how to capture movement in an interesting way, stack a series of photos on top of each other, and really use your superpower and knowledge of layers and layer masks to make a really interesting photography composition. I look forward to seeing what you create, and thanks for watching!